I'm Jaap Jansma from CVCO, uh, and this is Valerie from CVDesk. <coughs> we will present this session together about the, the uses of CVCM profiles and Drupal web forms. Uh, uh, Valerie will first explain how uh, you could use in CVCM the profiles to enter data, uh, to enter custom data, how you could. Uh, enter the data and how people could enter the data. Then I will show you a little bit about Drupal web forms and then hopefully we have some time for questions as well. So, Kelly? Yeah, yeah, so I will show easy stuff. Okay, so profile can be used for contribution pages, like donation pages, for example, um, event registration, member sign up, member renewal, user with restriction, so different and, and much more, we'll see that afterwards. So what is a profile? A profile is a, a particular view on your data and on your constituents. This is how we define a profile. So for example, this is an event page or registration. So here, this is a profile. Let's include your registration info. This is a profile. So you can have different profile for your events. And when you configure your event on the uh, online registration tab, you decide what profile, profile sorry, <laughs> you include in the top of the page, for example, registration info, what profile you include at the bottom of the page. Then if you have additional participants, if one person registers a different person, you, you um, decide uh, for additional participants what would be the profile on top of the page and what would be the profile on the bottom of the page. So usually at top it's the basic info and then at the bottom it may be uh, other stuff like are you vegetarian, are you coming uh, uh, for all the sessions or for several sessions and so on. So this is how you include your profile in the, uh, in the event. Yes. First, well, this is, this is a profile by default. It comes by default, your registration info, but maybe that's not exactly the field you want to have. It's like, for example, this is the, um, this is the profile uh, registration info by default, mm -hmm. but maybe you want to copy this profile and make another one more um, adapted yeah. to your needs. So I would recommend you to copy this one and then make another one using, because first name, last name. Then here you have the employer. You didn't have that over there. And you have the job title. You didn't have that over there. And the phone and email. Well, of course, the email, you had it, but not the phone. So you, you, you copy this one to make your own customized profile. And this is the one you include in your event page. I would recommend not to modify the, the profiles by default in CV. I would recommend to copy it and then to work on the copy to customize it to your exact needs. So once you have your profile, and we'll, we'll see how we make this profile. But once you have it, you can configure in your online registration page, okay? Another uh, use of profile would be in the membership page for sign up or renewal. So when you configure your membership pages, you have this tab here, profiles, and it's the same as before. So you include a profile at the top of the page, for example, your primary contact, and you include some profile at the uh, bottom of the page. For example, 
designated representative of, for corporate. And this is a profile you built specially for your membership page. OK, so uh, profiles can also be used for uh, constituent directories. For example, a directory of member, member directory or donors directory. They, they can also be used for uh, standalone sign-up forms. Uh, they can also be used to handle survey and petition responses. Uh, they can also be used to view different info in search results. So we have no time to, to go uh, deeply into each one because I want to leave some time for YAP. But um, we'll see this one, like uh, view different info in search results because this is an easy stuff. Uh, usually users, they, they, they don't like it, like the search by default. They don't like it, they want to change it and they don't know how to do that. So we'll go into that one. Um, and they can be also a good help with uh, data entry operation. For example, if you have volunteers entering uh, donors' information, you might not want to give them access to CV because it's too bright, too large, too wide, and you want uh, them to enter data through a profile because it's much easier. So this is uh, for that you, you would go through a profile. Well, in fact, all data entry uh, goes through profiles. So profiles are everywhere in CV. So these are the main examples of uses of profiles in CV. So it's a very uh, important notion in CV, custom fields and profiles. Is that possible also through the back end? If you're in the office entering data, and you'd rather use a profile than the full CV? Of course. Of course. Okay. Well, you can access this profile by the web, so you can be at home, it can be a volunteer at home, or it can be a person in the office, it doesn't make any difference. Um, can I just check though, you wouldn't necessarily, if you were logged in as an administrator and you went to a profile page, it would pre-fill out your details because yeah. you're logged in? So you oh, you, you have tricks. Maybe, yeah, you can answer the question. You have tricks to yeah. avoid that. Your yeah, own yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, can you <laughs> answer this lady's question? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a good question. I haven't really worked with profile, so. Um, uh, yeah. Well, you. Yeah, 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 you have. have the option, but. Yeah. 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 Or you uh, open another browser. Well, there are ways to, to go around that, of course. Yeah, and I also think that you could use profiles to edit other contexts, but I'm not sure how that works because I've never used the profiles, but that will be my guess. Okay, so these are uh, menus, yeah? Just one quick question. Is it possible to use profiles to allow um, volunteers to submit events Like to register participants? N not to register participants, but to submit an event to go into a calendar of events. To so like a, event. a, a local branch um, of volunteers could organize themselves submit well, an event on the website, which we okay. can display. Uh, why you wouldn't use the uh, configuration? the um, event page, like to configure your event page. If they didn't have access to Civi. Oh. That's my problem. Um, good question. I'm, I'm not sure I know the answer no, for that. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not possible. Okay. Um, um, yeah. And I would also ask a different question is, if people are doing that, why won't you give them access to Civi? That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> you will have several reasons why you won't have this, yeah. Yeah. but those are the questions you have to answer first. So, yeah. Okay, so now to build a profile, what do you need? You need custom fields. 
So first you have your cluster fields and then you build your profile. So that's all you need to know about custom fields and profiles. Always in there. That's the point. And then you just follow the screens. You just follow what's in there. So uh, just a few reminders because uh, custom fields, I realized yesterday that in my session that people were not fam very familiar with custom fields. So uh, just a little bit of basic about custom fields. So they're organized in sets to make it clear. Uh, they are used for either organizations or individuals. So when you create your custom field, you decide what it's used for. And then regarding display, they can be inline, so that means underneath, or they can be in tabs, so it's a new tab in the contact record. Okay, so let's make a new field for um, a newsletter. So you would add the field label, so newsletter, and then the type of data, so it's a yes, no option with a radio button. So you have several several options here in this menu. You have several options here, different type of custom fields, and, and then different type of having, uh, well, displaying the info like a, a choice, a multi-choice, well, different options. Then you have the option, is it required? So I would not, uh, I would not click that box here. I would rather click it in the profile, but not in the custom field, because then if the person doesn't answer the question, the contact cannot be saved. So I would rather have a required field, not in the custom field, but in the, uh, in the profile. Would that apply to the whole profile then? Like the, they would have to fill out everything within... We'll see that when we be there, but regarding the custom field, if you have this required, that means every time you will register a contact, and I'm not talking about a participant, you will need to answer that question. So required field is more accurate. Well, there are some exceptions, but it's more accurate if it's on the profile side rather than on the custom field, like a general rule. And then you can make this cut custom field searchable to have it in your advanced search. If this box is not clicked, you won't find it in your advanced search. It needs to be clicked. And of course, it's active. So this is how you set up a custom field. Yeah, it was how to change all the different kinds of um, inputs, the different kinds of fields. No, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't have a slide on that. Well, you take your CV and it's a drop-down list, so yeah. you have different options. I can show you afterwards. Oh, no, I, I know, I just thought it would be useful, especially um, seeing as I recently upgraded and it's got so much better. I think I was on quite an old version and now we're on 4.4.5 4 and the multi-select ones are just totally different. Okay, okay. my demo is on 4.4, 4, so I don't have the uh, features of 4.6 with me. Um, the other one, the viewable, the last tick box that it had, I don't, uh, no, uh, no, I'm doing wrong way. <laughs> no, does that, so that mean it doesn't connect to city? Is that? Um, I don't know, do you know about this tick box? <laughs> it, it, it makes, um, then um, this field Maybe. is only viewable and only to a uh, program and you could build data into this field. So it's only read, readable in city and the uh, When you have, for example, um, data which comes from an external source, for example, you have connected your CV to an, a financial application, and a financial application is sending data back into CV, you could say, for example, that this view, field is only viewable, so only your people in your accounting office who are working in the financial system are updating the data there, and you can only read it in CV. Like read, read, read only? Yeah, read only, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, Thanks. I use it. <laughs> Okay, so this is how you set up a custom field. And then in your profile, so now we are building the profile. So we have our blocks and we're just finding those blocks to, have to build our profile. So you need to select which category. So if your custom field is on individual, you will find it here. 
It's just like at home in the morning when you're looking for socks, you go in the sock drawer. It's the same thing here. If you're looking for a custom field on the individual, it will be on, on, on this, in this box, let's say. Okay, and then this is the name of your, um, this is the name of your uh, set, custom field set, and then you have your custom field. And then you have a different label, because in your uh, profile you want a different label. So you're not going, uh, you will turn the question nicely like, would you like to receive our newsletter? Yes, no. Here you have a field label for the user. And here, in the profile, you tick the box required because you want people to answer that question. And then in your profile, you have the email of the person. Would you like to receive our newsletter? Yes, no. And there is a red um, <coughs> star here because the field is required. So the field is required in the profile, but not in the custom fields. <coughs> okay? Now, if you want to have uh, to change your search result, for example, when you are looking for contacts, the uh, the cons they don't you don't like them. You want other cons. It's just you want something else. You want something different. So um, you uh, you have, for example, a pro you set up, for example, a profile search views individual with exactly what you need in there. And then in your advanced search, here with search views, you click and you select which profile you want to use. So you can have several profiles here for search results. So here you select search views individual and you've set up what you want, which column you want. So this is the, the search view by default. But maybe you don't care about the address, maybe you don't care about the state, maybe you don't care about the country, or, well, maybe there are things here that you don't need and you want customized data. Sorry, Valerie, where, after we did the um, setting up the new field and then setting up the new profile, mm -hmm. where have we gone now? What was the last setting up the new, yes? You go to advanced search and you don't want the search results by default, you want the search results through your profile. Okay. So you want to look at your data mm -hmm. with the profile you, you built. Okay. So this is, you in search views, you select your profile. So you're setting up another way, another advanced search type. Mm -hmm. like that you, can search. you customize your advanced search, okay. you, if you okay. want to say so, okay. yes. A profile is just a view on the data. So the, the advanced search by default, the, you don't like it. You want something different, something more customized. So this is an easy way to have exactly the cons you want. So here is the uh, search display by default. And this is the one you set up, for example, with the current employer here. I don't have much employers, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay? You understand the idea. In this way, you can display the contacts and you can pick the columns you want. And that's easy, that's just a few clicks. Okay, so uh, for those who attended the session of the core team this morning, CV uh, profiles are not very flexible, I would say. So flexible forms are coming in 5.0. <laughs> so you can have a look at the roadmap there, okay? And um, you have much more possibilities with Drupal web forms. So this is what yeah, is going to explain to you now, but just one thing <laughs> before <laughs> I do. 
Um, I want just to advertise our training on CV. So our training calendar is uh, online on cvdesk.com and we have online sessions. So uh, Susan, our training manager, is doing uh, beginner sessions and advanced sessions. So those are two hours sessions. And Virginie, one of the founders of CV Desk, is doing CV tips. So CV tips are like half an hour session on a particular topic. So it's really, uh, really um, uh, effective. And for example, you, you had one the other day on custom fields. You have one on CV mail, you have one on standalone forms. So you focus on one topic for half an hour. So those are online webinars. And I'm also offering webinars in French, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> you don't need those. <laughs> Okay, so uh, please check, if you need some training, please check our training calendar on our website. That's it. Oh, sorry, you have the mic. OK, I'm uh, going to show you uh, a few things which you could do with Drupal web forms. And so less easy to what I've showed. Yeah, and, and <laughs> which is uh, different than um, uh, profiles. Profiles are, are in CVCRM, have multiple uses. And what I'm going to show you is something which is in Drupal. So if you have installed CVCRM within Drupal, you could use the web form module to create uh, advanced forms for entering different kinds of data. And I've set up uh, a kind of demo website for this session. And I thought about a simple organization saying I'm working in a neighborhood organizations where people could make a complaint about the neighborhood if someone has the music or too much noise or something or uh, when people are volunteering for a join a committee or we organize a barbecue event for all the people who are living in the neighborhood just just a simple use case for showing what we could do with web forms so i've set up this website here it's showing that we have a barbecue soon and you could sign up here you can make a complaint and join the committee so and if we want to make a complaint, we see this form where we could enter our na first name, middle name, last name, email, uh, household name, address of the household, and here some details about our complaint. And what this does is does, uh, it creates a, uh, an in individual in CVCRM, it creates a household in CVCRM, it creates a relationship between <coughs> those both and the complaint is registered as an activity and in CVCRM. And this you cannot do it with profiles. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how it looks like when, you are, when we are logged in. Um, let me see if I can get the screen. There. So is it true that you can't create relationships with profiles, but that's one of the benefits of web forms, right? Yeah. 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 Well done. I think this is better. Um. Oh no, it's still the same. <laughs> um. We go to the menu. Well. Um, I'm a bit lost now. Um, yeah, I found it. This is the Drupal menu. Uh, and I think I've installed a Drupal admin menu module. Uh, and now, because my screen is a bit smaller, it looks a bit different. Um, this is where you have in Drupal your content. And if we look at the make a complaint, we see that it is a web form. And uh, a web form is, is a, a form in uh, Drupal, 
and I've made also a connection with CVCRM with it. So if I'm going to edit it form, this form, I'm going to see that I can enter a title, provide a menu link, just the default things you could do in Drupal. Then I have a tab web forms where you don't have CVCRM, you could use web forms and could enter, could add fields and uh, different kinds of fields here for entering data just in Drupal. But because we are linked to CVCRM, we have also a CVCRM tab here. And that's where all the magic is. And I've enabled CVCRM processing, which is disabled by default. And I've said, okay, this form is about two contacts. The first one is an individual, the second one is a household. And then I've now selected the first contact and I've selected that it's an individual, but I've also selected the fields which I want to show. So I've selected first name, last name, middle name. Um, I can select which uh, dedupe rule you can use. Um, so you could say, okay, I want to use the default one or I don't want to use any one. I want just the one to make sure every contact is new to the system, although I might already have them in the system. And I've selected here that I want to have one email field. And then I've here selected that I want to have the email and that the location type of the first email is the uh, home email address. The form that's displayed yeah. that we just saw, is that Drupal fields that are linked to Civi? Yeah. Or are they, is it an exposed Civi form? No, no, it's, it's basically a Drupal form, which is linked to Civi, yeah, yeah. So as soon as we submit the form, it will, or if, when you are logged in into Drupal already, because sometimes you have an account or a site where uh, people who are in CVCRM could also log in into Drupal, then you could pre-fill the form with the data from CVCRM. But if people are not logged in, you could, when it's submitted, it will fill in the CVCRM details into CVCRM. Say that again? <laughs> yeah. Um, so if, because what I was showing just is about, uh, I wasn't logged in into Drupal before. Were yeah, in? I weren't logged in, no. Okay. And uh, if I was logged in, the web forms could prefill my data already. Because it knows which contact I am in CV. You as a user. You, I'm as a user, yeah, administrator. But sometimes you also have like a kind of intranet uh, website uh, where people could just log in. And because I'm a member of your organization, but I could only change your their own address details and they don't go into CV but I use web forms for that. Um, and the options we have here uh, are the options from CVCRM so those are the fields from CVCRM. Uh, if you have any custom fields in CVCRM they also show up here. So you just uh, tick the boxes of the fields you want to have on your form, uh, which I've said first name, last name, and email, and with the household. I'm going now to the second contact. I've said, okay, I want to have the household name. I want then have one address. Uh, what if you just made some new custom fields inside CVC, then how do you uh, add them to uh, your Drupal uh, form? Um, you so first create a standard list of uh, what's yeah. already there, but if you make a new custom field inside CVCRM and you want it to use that in a Drupal form. Yeah. If if I'm going to add a custom field now in CVCRM, it will show up on the ah. if I go back then to the web form, it will show up here in this edit screen, then I have to tick it. Oh ah, okay. Ultimately updates. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um so yeah. that would be if you said when you made the custom field yeah. said I want that to be available for individuals. Yeah. It will be available when you select an individual yeah. as one of yeah. the fields. Yeah. <coughs> you do just need to set the NCL to the fields there. <coughs> then flush the cache in CV Not not really. No, you don't, no, you don't have. No. I can't even Okay, you um yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're using uh, very specific access restrictions on custom fields, uh, which I think you have as well with the, uh, at the Socialistic Party, then maybe something might come in into that custom fields aren't showing up in Drupal because 
There's some excess restriction somewhere. Not, not really. We, we can do, I um, create a custom field and we could see what would happen. Let's do that then. Um, well, let me go to, yeah. You didn't talk about the two options you need to uh, activate in Drupal to have that, to be no. web forms in CV. Yes. Okay, I'm now in CV. Uh, I still see, uh, see the big picture. Um, when I'm creating custom fields, you can do that as an administrator. You go to administer, customize the data and screen and custom fields. And oh, I see I have some consistent information. So let's add another set of custom fields. So let's uh, think of... Uh, Say we are going to ask for the color of the eyes. Uh, and we will use that on individuals. Any? And this is just creating the set, so I have to create a field afterwards. So well, let's keep that as a text field. So if we now go back to uh, the Drupal web form, it should show up there. So if we go now to the CVCRM tab, we will see here enable color of the eyes fields. So I say yes, <laughs> and then I click tick the box eye color. And then when I save the form, we got an extra field uh, here saying eye color, which is a text field. And when I'm looking at the form now for making a complaint, it's, it shows first name, last name, eye color. <laughs> so, yeah. So in the, um, in the, the screen, this one? Yeah. yeah. The, um, the type with the CIVI icon, does that show you that it's CIVI link? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. And it shows here even that it's an individual, and here it's a household. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, you tick. recognize your CV data. Yeah. yeah. If you were to tick required against one of these fields that's not required, would it write that back into the CIVI? No. 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 It's then required just on this form. So, and for example, we don't have a select field here, but sometimes you could change field types. If you have like a list of options, you could have like radio buttons, which are like the, the thick ones or drop down button. You could switch between those as well. Which you cannot do that in the CV profile. You need yeah. to redo the custom mm. field. You mm. cannot change the type of custom field. Yeah. Is it possible in the future to um, have the relationships in the CVCRM? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say um, uh, it's not yet there, so, uh, and you're working now with what's here. So, uh, web forms is one of the options, profiles is one of the options. If you're using wor WordPress, you don't have web Drupal web forms, for example. Um, some documentation for the minimum access rights that you have to give people in order to use a web form. Is it, is it easy? And you mean using web form as filling in the form or? To 
creating. To creating the form. Um, I don't know if there is any documentation. Um, um, is that the anonymous role? Anonymous user? No, no, you need to be an. an uh, oh, uh, yeah, 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 because, because you need to. The, the first role you need or the access permission you need to have is to add web forms in Drupal. If you don't have that permission, you don't get here. So if you have the permission to add web forms, uh, you could add uh, the web form. But I'm not sure when access permissions, how that works exactly, when you have the permission to add web forms and CVCRM permissions fine grained. But I will presumably assume that if you don't have the permission for events that you can't uh, add event fields, but that's something you should just try out and see if that's working or not working. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I've I've never come across a, a use case where this was really a requirement. So, but uh, it could be that it's a requirement from an organization. Um, I've created here a web form for sign up for the barbecue, uh, which is an event in CV. And with this form, you register yourself for attending the barbecue. So you enter first name, middle name, last name, your address and email, and then you're registered as a participant for that event. And I'm going to show you now how that web form is set up in uh, Drupal. So here I have a web form barbecue, and again I could add this <coughs> to the menu or uh, alter the title. And if I click on web form, you see the same kind of field sets again. I've entered your name, uh, the first name, middle name, last name, and this I've also added the existing context. So when someone is logged in and sees this web form, it prefills the form. If I remove this field, the existing contact, then it doesn't get prefilled. And what is nice also is that you can drag and drop to change yeah. the order. And it's not as easy <coughs> as in CV. Yeah. Presumably you can also do additional um, participants and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Using methods yeah. like two children and yeah. a husband and an auntie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Be, and what you have to do, uh, what you have to do then is then here when you click on the CVCRM tab is to select multiple contacts, and then on the here we could say okay, uh, I've here selected the individual and the fields for the individual, and here we have a tab for event registration, and I've set register all contacts for the same event because you can also uh, distinguish each contact for different events. So. Uh, and I can show the events to the user, but I've, in this case, I've pre-selected the event we are going to register for. So I've pre-selected here the neighborhood barbecue. But if you are saying, okay, I want to, that the user makes a selection of the event he is attending, you click here, user select, and it will add a field to the registration form where the user could select the event. And I can give then uh, the participant a role which is the attendee, is the volunteer, and I could set the status to what it's set up in CV on the CV event uh, type uh, of the uh, CV event page, or I could manually set the status, or I can use a select. And if we do use a select, for example, then we could let's see what would happen then. Then we got another field here. We have to say select uh, and automatic. And if we click, uh, we if we're going to edit that field, we could uh, we have two options. We could say live options, which means all the options are live from CVCRM, or we use the static options, which is default. And then I could unclick different options, which I don't want to show to the user, or rename them if they got a different label. Yeah. Right. Does, uh, like if you've got an event happening there, that's the event that you've set up in the city yeah. first and then 
the same thing as the individual you yep. uh, have that in the events tab. So yep. you first create your city event, yep. and then this is the way that they're registering for that event. Yeah, but if you have, for example, um, for example, if we are going to organize very often a barbecue, <coughs> and we don't want to create a new web form for every barbecue, yeah. um, we could select here in CVCRM on the event registration. We could select here that um, we could show an event of the type, for example, workshop. We could say if we want to show past events or none of the past events. We could say here then what we want to show. So let's say uh, the title only. And then we could here say that the user selects the event. Let's see. And then when we save, we got here uh, uh, and uh, the field changed to checkboxes live. So if we look on the registration form now, it shows on um, all the events from CIFI, all the upcoming events. Is there any way of cloning a web form? Um, I think there is a Drupal module for cloning content. Yeah, and if you install that Drupal module, uh, you could clone web forms. Yeah. So. And yeah, node export and node input works, but if you are exporting, if you're using node export and importing it in a another CV environment, it doesn't work. Yeah. In the same one. Yeah. Yeah. In the same. In the same. In the same. Yeah. Within the same environment. Yeah. You just mentioned there that all upcoming events would be displayed. Yeah. If you have some events which are not for general public, yeah. would it not display those? Like if those events are for <coughs> postgraduates or something like that, like they're not present, right. shouldn't be visible to the public? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you, you would create a different event type because we have here a conference, yeah. exhibition, fundraiser, probably you have then in your organization different types. I think we can, so let's try. Yeah, we can, we can. So we change it to static and we say, okay, we don't want to this one. And we could also change it to uh, a, a drop down. So we've checked the list box. So, and if we then look at the form, it shows or this, or I can, or could select multiple now, so that's, that's why it's this. I have another uh, form set up, um, which is join the committee. And when you join the committee, you become a member. So I've set up a membership type in CV. Uh, and um, I first, uh, and the form just asks again for first name, middle name, last name, the gender this time email, household details. So if you're going to look in that, in that form in Drupal, then we see again the fields I've selected. And if we go to the CVCRM settings, I've again selected two contexts. One is the individual, one is the household which is every time the same. And in this case, I've selected, I want to have the membership enabled. And I've selected that the membership is for the household and not for the individual, I see. And then I've selected here, he becomes a member for a committee member. Again, we could also select user select, which gives us the option again with, uh, that the user could select which membership type he wants to sign up. And we could give the membership uh, status could be set to a predefined status or the automatic status which you have configured in CVCRM. And for how long he signs up. And you could also add extra fields for, ex for example, member sins or end date or start date or, um, or if you have custom fields on membership, then those custom fields will show up here. A membership fee, um, 
I'm not really. I think you need a contribution page for that, um, uh, because you also want to have then the membership fee possibly paid to be online. So you need to set up a payment provider, and then you need to set up a contribution page for your membership in CVCRM, and then you could probably use this web form to uh, add a membership fee. So I could click tick here membership fee, I think. <coughs> I'm not sure what the help text says. It should show something, but yeah. Oh, and now I got <coughs> labels. Uh, maybe I should. Oh yeah, I need to here, and then I need to select a um, contribution page which is used in this web form. Mm. And something is I broken. The other way around, in that little pop-up box, it says something like, mm. "If you tick this, you can't use the default." Oh, okay, yeah, like yeah, not yeah. <laughs> Let's try. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let's save oh. it then. <coughs> oh, some. The legal choice has been detected. Yeah. To guess where. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now it says it want to remove the first name, middle name, last name. This is not going to be really well. But it is possible to use it uh, all the time for events. So yeah. yeah. So you can take money through a Drupal web form, yeah. uh, which then relates through to your CV contact page. Yeah. yeah. So it's like what you said, you have to put up a contribution uh, page. Yeah. So is the contribution page uh, like a profile that's embedded onto the web form, or is it an actual separate page? I think it's a profile. Um, let's let's try it because I got it working. I see. So we could say, okay, we got the contribution amount. We use the test processor, and let's do test mode. So if we go then here, we probably have to fill in the details. Well, let's select new. And then we got on a second page, we could enter an amount saying, okay, I'm going to pay $10 for this membership fee. And then I have to enter the credit card details. And this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think so as well. So. Yeah. But but what we see here is that we included the profile as well. So here comes the combination of the profiles and the web forms. So basically, probably this is too much information because we already have entered our personal information. So. Yeah, I don't think you miss it. I think I haven't told. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let's show me where that is done. Mm. If I go then to the CVCM tab, we see here that we have two contacts. 
And contact one is usually uh, individual or the user, or and then contact two and further are the additional contacts. And then on contact two, on the bottom of contact two, I could select a relationship to your name, and your name is what I have called the first <coughs> contact. Bless you. Um, and then I've selected the, uh, the relationship type. I've said, okay, I want to have a relationship household member is, and the relationship becomes active, no permissions, and no start end date. So the user won't see, or the, 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 the one who's filling in the form won't see anything about this relationship, but in CVC and the relationship is created. So, I and if you have like three contacts on your web form and you want to have a relationship between contact three and contact two, you should go to contact three and then on the bottom. And you cannot do that with profile. I've also not shown you that we have created an activity when someone is making a complaint. Um, and I, I could select uh, the number of activities I want to create. Yeah. Could you set it up so somebody can kind of create their own relationship? Like, for example, yeah. uh, you, you can choose from a list of yeah. options that you're a member of this organization. Yeah. yeah, so if I go back to the bottom of contact two, I have here the relationship type, and then I have an option user select. And that creates that creates the same thing as with the event type or the membership type or the event status. So would you then have to link that up to like a restricted group? Because obviously you might risk exposing data, right? Not really, because we are entering two new contacts in this form. Again, if we look at the activities, um, if we create an activity for the complaint, I've said, okay, I want to create one activity. I could also update an existing activity if I want to. I could, I, in this case, I've also uh, created a case, in CVCRM case, a complaint and a housing support case, and I filed the activity on the case. So. And I select uh, which are the participants and the creator of the activity. I could assign the activity to one of the contacts from my web form. Uh, I could tick boxes which users could fill in, even attachments if you want to. And if you have custom fields on your activity, they show also show up here and you could tick them. And because I also have said I want to fill this activity on the case, I have here enable the case support. I've said I want to have one case. Uh, I don't want to update an existing case. So in this case, we, in this example, we will create a new case. But I might imagine that you sometimes have cases where people fill in a form and then you want to update an existing case because you're working on a, uh, with them already. And with the case, you could select who is the client, uh, who is the, the manager. And can you then send out an email to the, uh, the administrator who has to deal with these uh, cases? Mm. Uh, if somebody filled in a form and then I want to uh, know it right away, so I get an email in my inbox and I know it, well, I have to. Would that be through rules? Yeah, I would say there are different ways to do that. Um, my, my first mind will be why would the case manager get an email as his daily job is to check cases. <laughs> so he is already probably well, working in CV. Yeah. Daily, that can mean uh, 9 o'clock and, yeah. and the activity gets in at, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. 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 Right. So, so that's why I would want uh, an email. So I yeah. act directly and not wait for, for me to open the report in the morning. No, no, exactly. And um, you could set up. In Drupal, you could, on Drupal web forms, you could say, okay, I want to send an email to when the form is filled in, I want to send an email. You could use CV rules for that. You could I think we have it installed on our Drupal, so if 
somebody changes their uh, uh, financial details, we get an email. Yeah. So. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. And uh, you could also use scheduled reminders for that in CV because we have created an activity in here and scheduled reminders could act up on creation of activities or memberships or events. So there are different ways to, to achieve this. Any other questions? I would guess we go to the individual then and then say privacy preferences or preferred communication methods and then let's say this I called two extra fields again those are uh, check boxes with static so I called uh, uh, so if you look at preferred communication methods, I called here phone, email, postal mail, SMS, fax, which comes from CVCRM, and I called enable or disable one of the options. And then on the web form, we go back. We will see here the preferred communication methods. And the yeah. Yeah, web forms could also you uh, add uh, context to, to a group. So again, that's, I think it's on the individual, so let's see. Yeah, it's here, enable tags and groups, so we enable that. And we say, okay, we want to add this contact to the newsletter subscriber. Um, well, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting here an existing group from CVCRM. And again, I have a new uh, an option, user select, which means if you have multiple newsletters and you want to have the user to tick the boxes to check uh, to subscribe on this newsletter, we could then uh, uh, say which groups the user could select. So we, we will do a user select for the group. Yeah, for, for example, if you have like two groups, which are the, the, the newsletter groups, newsletter subscribers and summer program volunteers. And uh, um, if I save that field then for the group, and I look then at this form again, we get here the groups, and then you have to tick the boxes which you want to subscribe to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what's possibly then uh, you could use a smart group for that. Then, uh, but also what could be possible is with CV rules, probably when this box is ticked, then add them to this group. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to use web forms for a web survey. Yeah. Um, 
what do you like about the website, uh, tick boxes, yeah. how satisfied are you? Um, how can you then get the data from that web form and display it in a usable way? In CIFI? CIFI Drupal. Yeah. Um, in, in Drupal, you could use views for uh, creating a, a kind of report from web form yes. results. Yeah. And there was this morning, I think at 9.30, there was a session <coughs> about views. So you probably have missed that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, um, that's one way of showing that the results nice. Um, if you have the data in CV, you could probably use CV reports for displaying the data. No. Yeah. 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 I I don't have any submissions here. Um, but if I had submissions, I would see them here. I could download them to CSV. I could analyze them. I could see them in a table. I, or I could clear all the results. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time for lunch, so yes. if you have any more questions.